Hi there again, everybody. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two. As you can see, Art Kirsch and I are with the fabulous Bill Jordan. Bill, great to see you again. Fabulous to be here. <laughs> hey, Bill, I'm going to go um, a little 50s or 60s on you. They call it puppy love. You were you were just recently uh, talking to us about um, uh, they've got a new puppy. I was watching your Facebook page. There's a new puppy in your life. Yep. Yeah, uh, what, what's that all about? Life. You you already have a dog, don't you? Yes, uh, and for years we've always had two dogs, and we lost Foxy Roxy last January twenty seventh, twenty 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 two. She just, I mean, she. It was time, and it's a, it's a brutal thing. And when you, when you become a pet owner, you know that day is going to come. And so I was trying to be quite content with one dog, and thought maybe we could kind of maximize her. And yeah. she's just a great dog, Sophie. She's a big golden doodle, just kind of a. I think she's actually a clown, a doodle, just a big goofy dog who is a, a perpetual puppy. She's the Peter Pan of puppyhood. Um, <laughs> She's just a big goof. She's just a big goof. So anyway, um, toward the end of the year, my wife was like, can we maybe get another dog? And so we kind of talked about it. And it's like, can we get through the holidays? I got her to agree. Can we get through the holidays without adding a puppy to the mix of everything else going on? So, you know, beginning of the year came and she's just been pouring over the websites, of the SPCA, and then also some other like um, other doodle mixes. I was intrigued by uh, the German Shepherd uh, Poodle mix, the Shepherd Doodle, the Shepherd Doodle. And they're gorgeous if you see them online, but we would have to travel like to Illinois to get a breeder or South Carolina. That wouldn't be too bad, but it's like, you know, when I was a kid, you just, somebody in the neighborhood's dog had a litter and they said, do you want a dog? And you say, yeah, <laughs> you got a dog. Yeah. So the more we talked about it, we thought maybe one of the rescue spy, uh, places near Raleigh here would be a good idea. So she started looking online and we made three trips out there and we saw this this little girl and she's a brindle colored, we think, lab and plot hound mix, P-L-O-T-T. -T. I'll get the de definitive results. We're going to do a DNA thing here probably within a month or two to find out exactly what she is. But uh, yeah, she's just she's just great. But that debate was raging as to whether or not to get another dog and how long will Sophie uh, be around. And she's 11 and a half years old, and that's about the life expectancy for a dog uh, of her size and, and breeds. Yeah. So I, I had a friend years ago. He is now passed on, a retired Special Forces uh, colonel, did some amazing things in his career. But he advised me, he said, the secret to retiring is stop replacing your pets. Now, why and would he say that? Well, he kind of felt that they were an anchor. If you go somewhere, you got to worry about your dog. You got to, are they being taken care of? Or it's an extra expense if you've got to kennel them. Kenneling our dogs here is a, a significant cost in, you know, included into going on vacation. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's not, you know, certainly you love your dog, you want them taken care of, but when you come home and you, you know, you've got a thousand dollar bill for keeping your dog, it's holy smoke, I got to get in the kennel business. Yeah. Now I know certainly there's more to it than that, but that's kind of, I think what he was getting at. Um, I don't think, I, I don't think I would ever convince my wife to not have a dog. I don't think I could ever, regardless of how old we are, I think she will want a dog. I think the upsides are companionship and fun. Yep. And you got you got maybe depending on the breed, you you've at least got an alarm system. Maybe not a security system, but you have an alarm system. Um, that's to be considered. But I tell you what, she and I are both dog people. I love our grand cats, and we've had a couple of cats that I love them, but they were raised with dogs, and they actually became almost dog like. They'd come when you called and all that stuff. Yeah. They're pretty cool cats, but. We just love dogs. Dogs, there's something about, for us, there's something about that connection between dogs and humans, you know? Well, I, I, Bill, for I, us. I have to agree with you. Um, we, we never had a dog in our family until the kids were about uh, seven years old or so. We bought a uh, golden retriever, and we <laughs> now that's been, I don't know how many years, but decades, and we have never been without a dog or two, and sometimes three, believe it or not. 
because they just, you know, all of a sudden they show up. I don't know where they come from. <laughs> they show up and they're there and, and they become part of the family. But I agree with yeah. you. And that is that the, the emotional satisfaction of having this creature in your life far outweighs the inconveniences and the anchor, if you will, that your colonel friend mentioned. Right. And, you know, yeah. again, when we get when we get a pet, dog, cat, whatever, we know the day is coming when we will lose them. Sure. Well, you not, not and, but but for particularly me, but if for they're me, gerbils. <laughs> well, for me, and you guys probably have had this thought, too, because this is the way you start thinking. As you get a little bit older, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this puppy. And I'm going looking at the breeds, the lab, and whatever, and it's, a, you know, life expectancy, 11 to 13 years. I'm going, so if this dog lives to full life expectancy and I'm still alive, I'm going to be like 83 years old. Yeah. And that's a real wake up call. So the thought of being, is this the last dog I will ever have? But the truth of the matter is that's always been the case. Yep. Whatever dog I get, whatever car I buy, it could be the last one. Well, there's, so, there's, another so, side, there's another side to this guys. Okay. I know both of you have had dogs. I've had uh, several dogs uh, over the years. Uh, the first one I had, which was sort of the one that sort of turned me off on owning dogs, is uh, I had a wire hair terrier <laughs> called Tuffy, wonderful dog. But apparently back in the day when I was a, a wee child, uh, it ate something in the backyard or so my parents told me. Uh, probably there was somebody buried a refrigerator in those kind of days. That's got rid of things like that. And whatever it did, it ate something and it got sick and they had to put it away. And Ooh. I was devastated, you know, from that. And then I got chased by a German shepherd uh, once and got bitten. Uh, but in those days, you know, unless you started foaming at the mouth, you didn't get rabies shots. And it was just a, a, a bad dog. But we've owned dogs. But the problem with them is that I'm, uh, we, you know, we recently did a to-do or not to-do list. Well, there's a to-do or not to put a little plastic bag on your hand and go around. If you lived in the forest, I could see you let the dog out doing its thing <laughs> and coming back. So you guys are really kind of special people. Uh, I have a grand dog. Uh, uh, I think, uh, John, you actually uh, met him once, Sundance, who's a 10 or 11 years old now. And yeah. the big problem with him, and we love him to death, is that when the kids go on vacation with uh, their kids, uh, uh, the dog is so old, he's got arthritis, he's had cataract surgery and yeah. all those things. So he's got two sets of grandparents who split up the time when they're gone for three, four or five days. And we go and we feed him and give him his medicine and all that kind of stuff. It's a kind of dedication that, you know, uh, I don't know that I'd get enough return uh, in, in having the, the, the dog's head on my lap but you have a you have beautiful dogs you've always had them and you feature them on your facebook page and john you have two now we i think you had three at one point no we only we had three at one point we only have one now but uh, uh, you never know we might acquire another one but you know um the, it it strikes me that uh, on our um celebrating act two uh website we have a pet trainer Sarah. specialist, Sarah Surrett, mm. Peace from perfect. Get Positive. And she makes a very good point. She did a video for us about uh, choosing the right pet. And you bring up age. And, and she points out that, you know, depending on your age, a little kid or a very elderly person who, you know, need, has a walker, let's say, mm. you can't get a big dog that's going to pull you around and drag right. you down the street. Right. You have to get the dog... Right. That's right for you. And yeah. and maybe it's not a dog. Maybe it is a cat. Yeah. Maybe it's a gerbil. Maybe it's a salamander. Who knows what? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she, she, as a pet uh, trainer, she made that point. I think it's really important for, yeah. for older people. Absolutely. When we looked at this uh, rescue place uh, up in Wake Forest, North Carolina, uh, there was a German Shepherd mix. And we had a German Shepherd. And I just loved her. She was amazing. German Shepherds are really special. They are, be I say they are beyond dog. They are dog plus. There's something else about German Shepherds. Anyway, there's a sweet girl named Zara, and I was holding the leash for a little while, and that dog was taking me all over that place. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, so yeah, I could get her trained, but it's like, I, you know, in another five, 10 years, I don't know if I'm going to be able to control this dog. Right. So 
This dog that we got, I'm hoping is going to be like 40 to 50 pounds. And I think I can deal with that. Um, you know, there's some things in life we plan on what it's going to be like down the road and other things you just kind of, kind of roll the dice and because every day's a gift and. Yeah. But yeah. it, it, it's not uncommon to be real honest that older people, and I'm talking older people who have trouble getting around things like sure. that, that they have to get the, they have to get rid of their dog. And there's nothing right. wrong with the dog. It's that, that it's not appropriate. They have to right. give it away to somebody, mm -hmm. you know? Sure. And that, believe me, the, the pound is filled with dogs like that. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and that's why we often will go to the pound to look at for dogs. Yeah. If, if we're in the market. Yeah. That's a great idea. The well, one thing I think we can all agree on, whether you're a, a pet lover and you want to own a dog or a cat or, Quite frankly, John, you're making me think about salamanders now. Uh, <laughs> but whatever your pet choice is or isn't, one thing that we can always do is we can embrace the boom. Amen. Again, you guys are doing the mug. I'm holding up the book. The book is available on Amazon.com. I'm and doing the book. 15 practices, 15 practices and to lead a less. Yeah, yeah. Well, check it out. Great reviews. I've got all five star reviews. I'm very humbled by that. Uh, but it's really meant for, it's meant, meant for people of all ages, quite honestly, <laughs> targeted to baby boomers, but for everybody live your life, forget your age and embrace the boom and get a puppy. For more on celebrating act two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube and tell your friends celebrating act two is the user manual for the second half of your life.